How you doing fam man? This is Chris Mizo here and I want to talk to you about the differences between the Z690 versus the Z790. If you're probably thinking about upgrading to Intel's newest 13th generation processor, you're on the right path, but you're probably thinking which board you should get because they're both very similar boards, but does it really matter on which chipset you choose, whether if it's a Z790 or a Z690? I brought up a chart just like this in my prior video, and we kind of had discussed about it. But in this very video, we're going to talk about Z790's newest features from your favorite manufacturers such as ASUS, Gigabyte, and MSI. I'm going to use those pure examples first because those are the main ones that people will look for and to purchase. And the reason why I wanted to start up with this is just refresh your, your guys' memory about what is the difference between these two processors and the chipsets. Now remember, when you see the top two, such as the Z790 features the 13th generation processor, this is also backwards compatible when it comes to the Z690. If you're looking at the top here, this is mostly focused on process and power. What is mostly and will continue to stay the same is such as the one lane for 16 times speed for PCI Express 5.0, and you can have one four times speed of PCI Express 4.0 lane, or you can have two PCI Express 5.0 lanes, one lane that is four times for PCI Express 4.0 lanes. Those remain the same. The four independent DP HDMI display supports also remain the same. Only difference that you will notice here is that you will see that DDR5 can go up to 5,600 megatransfers per second versus 4,800 megatransfers per second. Same thing with DDR4. That will remain the same because that's pretty much maxed out as it is for the last generation. And then you have up to 16 times PCI Express 5.0 and you have up to four times PCI Express 4.0. And again, this is specifically just the processor itself. Now, if you look at, go straight down to the Z790 chipset and the Z690 chipset, it mostly remains the same, but there is a few more advanced features, such as you have up to 20 times of PCI Express 4.0, and then you have up to eight times of PCI Express 3.0, and over here on the Z690, they're focused on 12 times PCI Express 4.0, and you have 16 times PCI Express 3.0. And if you look here, this is mostly connected through 16 gigabytes each, and same thing with 8 gigabytes each for PCI Express. Now, it is important to remember, this is mostly going to remain the same here. The only difference here is that you will have one extra USB usage that you will be able to have and that will be on the z790 chipset you will also have more advanced memory overclocking features because especially coming from the first generation of ddr5 of course it's going to have better improvement when it comes to memory so that means that the z790 motherboards can handle higher bandwidths of memory much better than a z690 can you also have a integrated sensor hub this is all mostly the same here a big difference is that you do have spi espi sm audio and he audio and, and mipi soundwire i want to start off by talking with your favorite manufacturers here such as the asus z690 maximus hero that is everyone's favorite board and as you know if you haven't seen it already the type of debacle that i ran into with the z690 i had a problem with it at first it came out fine if you haven't seen that build i have the card right above me but i i originally built my pc with that it did have a problem with the memory chip to where the polarity was backwards so it would short out and then your motherboard would simply not want to start. If you want to know the story more, make sure you check out the card above. I want to focus on its main features here. Let's go to the tech specs, because that is what is going to be important. And the deciding factor, especially if you're planning to upgrade your system, if you're coming from a Z390 or a Z490, the CPU will be backwards compatible. The 13th generation will fit into the Z690. Isn't noted here just yet because it is brand new. They're mostly trying to focus on selling you their brand new motherboard, of course. And what company doesn't, that's perfectly natural of them to do it. Now, the main difference you're going to notice here is the overclocking for memory. 
If you notice immediately, the Z690 has up to 128 gigabytes in memory, which remains the same. And again, it goes to bandwidth. It can go up to 6400 megahertz overclocking and more. If it goes into more, likely you will have to flash the BIOS. You have to flash the BIOS anyway if you're gonna put Raptor Lake inside of a Z690. Now, if you go into the memory here, it get, tells you straight up DDR5 at 7200 megahertz overclocking. Features remain the same, such as dual channel, and it will support XMP 3.0. Because of its memory optimization, because of how much it's improved since then, it can actually go up to 37.5% faster. Now, this is ASUS talking, and it hasn't been quite tested because the board hasn't been released yet. If you're focused on memory speed and that's really important to you, a Z790 would be good for you. But if you already have a Z690, then more than likely, it's probably not going to be that much of an upgrade for you. It might not even really be worth it unless you catch it on sale or something, especially for next year. They're going to be both 20 to 1 when it comes to team power staged and they're rated for 90 amps, so that won't be an issue. If you look at the expansion slots here, two lanes of PCI Express 5.0 by 16. Now note here, it supports 16 times speed, or it can go to eight times or eight times smooth. So what it practically means, both motherboards both do this. The Z690 and the Z790 will both have this issue. And what it will do is, if you choose to have two PCI Express 5.0 devices installed into your PCI 5.0 lanes and they have that type of speed, then it will split up the power because that chipset will not be able to give power to of 16 times speed to both lanes. That is where the power limit is currently. Now you look at the PCI Express 4.0 16 times slot. It does also support that and it also supports uh, the same exact mode such as these 690 does. Now you go into the storage area, this will also be the same. ASUS does give you a ROG Hyper M2 card where you can actually install NVMEs that are PCI Express 5.0 and it can support up to four times speed. So you can install that, that will work for your motherboard. It just will not be built in for specifically for Maximus Z790 Hero and the Z690 Hero. They both don't have that feature. Ethernet speed's about the same. And another difference here, if you look at the wireless Bluetooth, the only difference between the two, the Z690 will have Bluetooth version 5.2. The Z790 will have Bluetooth version 5.3. I don't know if that really matters that much to you, if that is that much of a big deal, because personally, that isn't really much of a killer. Remember how we talked about the USB feature when it comes to a newer processor? If you look at their USB, a total ports of 11 ports, and you got 12 ports when it comes to Z790, just as we discussed. So you will have one extra USB port. Now you go into the audio here, you got the ROG Supreme FX 7.1 surround high de definition. That's exactly the same chipset that they've used on the Z690. So nothing has changed here. That's exactly the same. The back panel ports are pretty much the same. The only difference is if you go into the internal IO connectors, Z790 will feature an alternative PCI Express mode switcher. If that's what you're looking for, if it is, the Z790 does have it, but the Z690 does not have that feature. And the Z790 also features a steel backplate instead of what the Z690 has. It does have one extra RGB extension cable when it comes to the ROG Maximus Z690 Hero. Software-wise, mostly everything is the same on both softwares. They both use ASUS's wonderful Armory Crate. The price of the Z690 currently, because the Z6790 hasn't been released, the Z690 is at $599.99 USD, and the Z790 is $629.99 USD. From a Z690, I wouldn't suggest it because it's, again, it's mostly the same. If you have a Z390 or something like that, then maybe it's just worth getting the Z790 because it's, what's $30? When Intel does release the Z890, when that does become the next generation, you will see major changes. Let's get to straight to Gigabyte because I wanna to talk to you about the differences of Gigabytes. And what I will use here will be Gigabyte's Aorus Master, Z690 and the Z790. 
All right, so the, they both feature the same exact features as it comes to CPU usage. They both can use the 12th generation and 13th generation. Chipsets are different as this is the Z690 and this is the Z790. And the support of memory, as you notice, is completely different right away. As you notice, the Z690 is limited to 6400 megahertz at overclock. And you have the Z790, which is at DDR5 7600 megahertz at overclock. So that will be the major difference between the two. Everything in the memory end is mostly the same. What's gonna be a little bit different here is their phases. For the Z690, it will use the Direct 19 and one plus two phases versus the Z790, which will use Direct 20 and one plus two. Now, when it comes to onboard graphics, this is the same. When it comes to audio, this uses the same chipset. The LAN is also the same as it uses the same exact chipset. See, as you can see, it's not really that large of a difference when it comes to the Z690 versus the Z790. They're all mostly relatively the same. The wireless module is exactly the same, except the Z690 will feature Bluetooth 5.2. The Z790 will use a Bluetooth 5.3. So that's just about the same, except for the Bluetooth versions, which is a big whoop de doo And then when it comes to expansion slots, this is just the same as well. For the Z790, it does use PCI Express 5.0. It does have an M2 connector for it versus the Z690 Aorus, which does not have the support for PCI Express 5.0 for NVMe. So this is one big advantage that you have between the two. Now the USB is practically gonna be a little bit different as again, this will have one extra USB over the other. Now, when we go to internal IO connectors, the Z690 has what is called a direct touch heat pipe two versus a improved cooling system for the Z790, which is a eight millimeter mega heat pipe. If you notice the thermal conduct Activity pads, they're also different in size. For the Z790, you get the PCI Express 5.0 with 16 times speed with ultra durable armor. And it also has a thermal guard three on the Z790. The Z790 also has the really nice feature of the easy latch plus as they call it, which is the same as the quick connect as Asus uses. So all you have to do is hit that latch it can release it immediately instead of actually trying to put your finger down the hole and trying to pop it off. Man, that doesn't sound right. But anyway, to get to the point, another difference between the two is that it does have five M2 connectors for NVMe 4.0 versus the four that the Z690 has. So you can put more storage onto the Z790 versus the Z690. And those are the slight adjustments Unfortunately, we don't have the price details of the Z790, but I can tell you the price details of the Z690, which is at $299.99 USD. Now let's get into MSI's, and I want to show you their Ace motherboard. We'll be comparing MSI's Meg Z690 Ace versus the MSI Meg Z790 Ace. The processors are backwards compatible with either motherboard that you can use. Now the memory will be the slight difference between the two. You have 7,600 megahertz overclocking and more versus the standard 6,666 megahertz or more. So it has more compatibility with going up further in speed and they both do support XMP 3.0. Expansion slots are all the same here. And then when you go down to the multi-GPU, they're both the same as they both support AMD multi-GPU. Onboard graphics is the same. Thunderbolt 4 is also the same. The storage is gonna be slightly different here. And this is what you have to pay attention to, especially if you're coming from a way older chipset. The storage can go for the M2 underscore four, can support up to PCI Express 5.0 with four times speed and supports 2280 devices which is the more common NVMe drive that you will see. So that is the difference between the storage. The RAID will be the same and the USB is practically the same here. They have Bluetooth 5.2, they both do. So that won't be different between the two, such as the uh, both other manufacturers, such as you saw from Asus and Gigabyte. I will mention the differences here when we go to the internal 
I.O. And that is that it will feature two pump fan connectors for the Z790 versus the Z690, which only has one. And you also have six fan connectors on the Z690, and you have five fan connectors for the Z790. And you can see that was an obvious switch there. They just traded one component for the other. So that was a slight adjustment that they did for the Z790 for improved cooling if you chose to go that route. It does have also have two times front panels on JFP, which is the Z790. And it does have slow mode booting jumper on the Z790 as well. It does have three addressable V version 2 RGB LED connectors on the Z790 versus just the two on the Z690. Now it's mostly the same when you look on the back plate and there's no difference between the two. This is almost strikingly similar in every fashion except sl you get slightly different things in their box content as in the Z690 you get uh, the screwdrivers you don't get them on this one here you don't get it on the z790 but the pricing on the z690 is 539.99 usd versus we're not too sure about the price but more than likely it's going to probably be like an extra 30 to 70 dollars more for their newer version of a motherboard another question you're probably leaning towards is when does it actually get released? And that's a great question because there's different release dates on all their motherboards. And you can check it out in the description box right down below. Most of them will be released on October 20th and they are also ready to for pre-order versus you having to wait for a release date to order their motherboards. But I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. You know, anybody that's looking to build a PC or is interested in the PC and tech world, make sure you share this video with them. And if you're not part of the big wonderful fan band, make sure you go down to hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right down here. It is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. So fan bam, guys, what type of motherboard will you purchase? Are you thinking about purchasing a Z790? If you are, please let me know why down in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.